Good day, everyone. My name remains Adebisi Otumba, and today we are here to discuss a matter that has been troubling so many minds concerning failed prophecies. In Nigeria, concerning the just concluded um, elections, many prophecies have failed from key prophets in the country. And this has caused a lot of problems in the minds of people, especially the internet bloggers have come out to criticize them and to see all manner of things that are not um, godly. And in order to save our lives from destruction, I've come out today to shed some light on the controversial issue. So today, I'll be talking on why prophets fail in their prophecies. Why prophets fail in their prophecies. To start with, who is a prophet? A prophet is a mouthpiece of God. As written in the book of Amos chapter 3 verse 7, the Bible tells us in the book of Amos chapter 3 verse 7 that God will not do anything except he reveals it to his prophet. It means that God will not do anything on this earth without informing some set of people that are referred to as the prophets. However, we have to understand some certain facts about prophecies. Prophecies are given to prophets based on three major factors. Number one, the source of the prophecy. Of course, the Bible tells us in the book of John chapter 3 verse 27 that nobody gets anything in this world except it be given to him from God. Honestly speaking, I must tell you today that Satan does not give prophecy. But Satan can manipulate prophecies. And he does the manipulation in order to steal, to kill, and to destroy the beneficiary of the prophecies and even the speaker of the prophecy. The number two factor that we have to bear in mind is the, the middleman, that is the mouthpiece of God. God is the source, then the mouthpiece of God on earth, who happens to be the prophet. Then the third factor that is very paramount and important in prophecy is the beneficiary. The beneficiary can be a person or can be a nation. All these three factors, they play key role in prophecy. But however, the question now is, can prophecy fail if it is from God? Of course, I tell you prophecy can fail. For this, I take you to the book of Ezekiel chapter 14. We are going to read just four verses and this will tell you or give you insight into why prophecies can fail. The book of Ezekiel chapter 14 verse 1, let's read together please if you have your Bible there. The Bible tells us in the book of Ezekiel chapter 14 verse 4 that then certain of the elders of Israel came and sat before Ezekiel. You know, Ezekiel in his time was a priest and at the same time a mouthpiece of God. God has spoken through him to the people of Israel in the land of bondage, Babylon. And now some elders came before him and wanted to know the mind of God about their faith in, um, in Babylon. What God had to ask for them, how God has planned to deliver them from the hands of the of the tormentors under the rulership of, you know, they, were, they went there under the rulership of Nebuchadnezzar. And now they knew that the time for their freedom had come and they wanted to know the mind of God. So they had come, they had chosen some elders to represent the people of Israel, especially the people of Judah, to hear from the prophet who God had been using to speak to them 
who happens to be Ezekiel. So they came to sit before him and they wanted to hear the word of God. And God spoke to Ezekiel. You can see Ezekiel being a major, a, one of the major prophets as you define him. Though I don't see any difference between any of the prophets in the Bible because all of them are a mouthpiece of God. So verse 2 now said, and, and the word of the Lord came to Ezekiel. Verse 3, he says, Son of man, these men have taken their elders into their heart and set the stumbling block of their iniquity before their faces. Should I, God, indeed let myself be consulted by them? But God will definitely listen to them. Therefore speak to them and say to them, Thus said the Lord God, Any one of the house of Israel who takes his idol into his heart and set the stumbling block of iniquity before his face, and yet comes to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him as he comes with the multitude of his idol. Simply to understand this, what God has just told Ezekiel is that, yes, the people have come to hear from him, but he will not give them the what he intends to do, but he's going to give them Response based on the intention of their minds. I will use Nigeria as an example to illustrate what God had just told Ezekiel here. When the election was coming, because people were grieved by the economic condition, people were grieved by the security condition, people were grieved because of so many unpalatable situations of the country. And people needed a change at all costs. So for that reason, majority of the youths have developed a mindset that somebody was going to win the election, regardless of the fact that this person may not win. They didn't put that in mind, so they had made up their mind. And if you look at the prophets that spoke in Nigeria concerning the interest of the people. These prophets, these pastors were pastors that have youth majorly in their churches. And because they wanted to please the people, not only that, but because God wanted to answer the people, the youth, based on what they have, what they have set up in their mind, He gave the prophets, the pastors, responses based on the intention and the mindsets of the youth. So from this, I will not say that the pastors and the prophets are to be relegated or to be condemned, but I want us to see from the angle that God has spoken through them based on the intention and the mindset of their beneficiary, of the beneficiaries of the prophecies. And that is why today you will still be hearing some people still, stay, still standing on the fact. Instead of them to go back to God and make further inquiries to be sure if the, if the prophecies they've given were basically on the mindset of, their benef of the beneficiaries or God is trying to show or God is trying to show himself in another dimension to them. They kept on doing a follow-up on the prophecy that had failed. And this, uh, that, this is causing more problems for them. I'm coming out to say this because I don't want us to continue to continue to bring shame onto the body of Christ. Because um, the people concerned today are people that are of great and mighty caliber in Christendom in Nigeria. And as it is today, the situation is now leading them to begin to curse people. Say all manner of sin they are not supposed to be saying, especially making um, evil pronouncements, evil decree concerning the president-elect that he will die before this very year. It is possible for prophecies to fail, even if it's coming from genuine professors of God. 
Ezekiel was a respected prophet that was known in the heaven, even by the host of heaven. Even God himself told him that he was going to answer them, was going to give him response to these people uh, based on what they have in their mind. He was not going to tell them the truth. Not that God is a liar, but God will deal with you based on what you have put up in your mind. There are rare occasions where God will want to force you to do the right thing, like the case of Bala. And there are cases God will want to just want destruction for some people, like the case of the 400 prophets that came before Ahab and Yoshaphat in the book of 1 Kings chapter 22. So, beloved, I want to admonish us and tell us that despite the fact that some prophecies have failed, the prophet should just go back to God and make further inquiries. And if they have done anything wrong, they should repent and seek for forgiveness of sin instead of compounding and making things complex for themselves. Nobody knows when Jesus will come. He says he's coming like a thief in the night. And when he comes, he meets you in this kind of controversy. I tell you, he will not go with him. So I want you to use this opportunity to quickly go back to God and stop the menace you are perpetrating in the body of Christ. And for those internet bloggers, I want to implore us that we have to stop so that we don't because of somebody in that ourselves from making heaven. It is true we are trying to correct some certain issues. But don't let us say because we want to correct somebody, we ourselves put ourselves into problems. God is the judge of all things. Let's do everything accordingly. Let's be orderly in our admonition. And I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. I will stop here today. Some other time I will be posting, I will, we will consider factors that make prophecy to fail. Thank you. And God bless.